The Cotswolds are about more than just beautiful honey colored stone and cream teas. This video will highlight our three favorite places to visit to see animals in the Cotswolds. First, the Cotswold Falconry Center, then the Cotswold Farm Park, and finally the Cotswold Wildlife Park. If you want to skip ahead, just click on the chapter headings for the park you want to see. In the description, I will provide links to the websites for all three parks. The Falconry Center is located near Batsford Arboretum in the Morton and Marsh area of the Cotswolds and is a wonderful place to visit to see all kinds of birds. You can walk through the enclosures and see various types of birds, including the southern crested caracara, some gorgeous owls, always a fan favorite. I could sit and watch them all day. Hello. <laughs> the way they broke it. <laughs> okay, this is the funniest thing I've seen. Out. And then he rotates his head. It's really cute. Oh, look. <laughs> okay, you are my favorite. You are it's definitely my favorite now. of the day. Links with one eye and it links with the other eye. And here is Ian demonstrating his owl calling skills. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> See? I told you. The owl did talk to you. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> now it's mad at you. You're not you're not speaking the right language. Menacing looking vultures, all sorts of hawks and falcons and buzzards. And finally, some beautiful bald eagles, which I'm a bit partial to because I'm American, not because I'm bald. The center is well suited for children of all ages and my nieces really enjoyed our visit but my favorite part of the day was watching the flying demonstrations where the handlers show off some lovely birds up close and educate visitors about the hunting techniques of birds. It's so interesting to see them flying about and interacting with the handlers. Here are a couple fun facts I learned whilst at the Falcon Center. Birds don't like flying all the time. It's exhausting. So a bird of prey will sit atop a tree for absolutely ages, looking for food scurrying around on the ground underneath. They are very patient and don't mind waiting as long as it takes to get a tasty field mouse. Birds of prey spend most of their day relaxing and not doing much at all, conserving their energy for when they must hunt. If it's possible for them to collect food by walking about, like this bird is here, rather than flying, they definitely will. Another thing you can do at the center is purchase an owl experience if you want to try flying an owl to and from your gloved hand under the supervision of a falconer, like this chap is doing here. Before leaving the Falcon Center, I just have to mention the challenges with filming animals. Come on, snowy owl, look at me. Rotate your head over here, snowy owl. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Ooh, ooh, ooh. quiet so she thinks we went away. Birds are often not cooperative when it comes to looking at the camera and posing. Turns out the same is true of small children and sometimes nobody cooperates. Like in this photo with the bird flying away, one niece only wanting to eat her crisps in peace and the other niece giving me some serious side eye. Next up is the Cotswold Farm Park, a place created by Joe Henson in the 1970s, and now it's maintained by his son, Adam Henson. They are a family who has lived in this area a long time, farming and passionately fighting to protect rare breeds of animals. Their mission of educating the public on the importance of responsible and sustainable farming is the foundation of the farm park. Throughout the park, you will not only see and have the opportunity to feed and interact with loads of cute farm animals, but you can also learn about the history of this area and how farming played a part in each historical era. This special park is located in the unspoilt and unspeakably gorgeous Cotswold countryside around Guiding Power. We started out feeding various goats and sheep and really enjoyed that. Let me introduce you to a couple of our favorite characters. 
But you do have to be careful to watch your food bag. The goats are expert at lunging out of the fence gaps and grabbing the paper bags in their mouths. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Yeah, the goat attacked your bag and tore it open, so now there's food everywhere. It's like a pinata. It's like a goat pinata. He's got a nice billy goat beard. Look at you. I love those horns. Those are beautiful. You look like something out of Star Wars. <laughs> to feed you some Wookiee whole cheese. This guy looks like something from Star Wars too. His eyes have that Darth Maul look to him. And then these horns are just like, I've never seen anything like that. They're, the helmet of Loki. they're going in all directions. Based on what I learned by watching QI last week, I believe these are sheep, not goats. I love their horns, but this one got a bit aggressive with the headbutting. This sheep was funny, just standing in the middle of the field yelling. I also loved this black sheep as he was smart and very good at taking direction. Talk. Tell Ian that you need some food. Go ahead. He's not going to feed you unless you bleat. Do it. Okay, Edie. There you go. Ian, you got to feed it now. I told him if you you would give him some food. You gotta bleat to eat. Bleat to eat. But this breed of sheep was probably the one I thought was the cutest. Reminds me of the valet black-nosed sheep that Ian's cousin has on her farm in Wales. And this little caramel-colored sheep reminds me of Claire's wasant sheep named Caramac. To see our visit to her farm, check out the link in the description below. Before we move on to other animals, we have to talk about one very important type of sheep the Cotswold Lion. As I mentioned in my Introduction to the Cotswolds short video, this area got its name because of the rolling hills covered in sheep, and this is the type of sheep that made it famous and prosperous. The Cotswold Lion, known for its incredible wool. Traditionally, the sheep would be shorn except for their fringe or bangs on their forehead. This allowed the potential purchaser to evaluate the quality of the sheep's wool. Now, the process of feeding the cows was a bit different than the sheep and goats. Check out this food delivery system. Okay, throw the food This is a food chute. Put the food in there. The cow gets to eat it down there. It's a big cow. I think, uh, I I think she think needs he, more than three little gonna, pellets. I don't think it's going to notice the food we're giving it. This is an itchy cow. Scratching her neck on the trough. It's the weirdest little warble. Little gobble. In addition to the acres of open fields where you can see and feed animals, there are also barns with other types of animals you can visit. having a nap in a piggy pile. To provide endless fun for little kiddos, the farm park also has a variety of play areas as well. And if you have a child like my little niece who is a nonstop bundle of energy, she might be happy to just repeatedly jump off the back of the wooden pig over and over. As we head back to the car park, I want to show you a neat thing that the Hensons are doing on the edge of the farm park. Because they are so concerned with conservation, they are working to provide a good environment for bees and other pollinators by cultivating a wildflower plot beyond the car park. We enjoyed stopping by, enjoying the flowers, both magenta and otherwise, and we hope that there are happy bees who are benefiting from these wilding efforts. While looking for our car, we spotted this vintage Alvis car, which had a rabbit hood ornament that seemed very appropriate for the day at the farm park. Have you ever seen one of these cars before? And last but not least, 
My favorite animal destination in the Cotswolds is the wildlife park. This is the animal place that I have been wanting to visit for a long time, the Cotswold Wildlife Park. So we're really excited that it's a sunny day and we're able to come and check it out. And also happy that we get to come visit with our nieces. They've been here loads of times, so we'll find out what their favorite things are and discover what our favorite animal exhibits are. The Wild Animal Park is located two miles from Burford in Oxfordshire. And if you've never been to Burford, that is a must visit town. Check out the link to my Burford video in the description if you're interested. Y'all, it is like Disneyland here. There's just acres and acres of cars in this car park area. In the last several years we've been to Britain, I think this is the most crowded place we have been. So this is gonna be interesting. I couldn't help myself. After entering the park, I made a dash for the place I most wanted to visit. And just beyond these magenta flowers were the darlings I came to see, Asian short clawed otters. Of course, we were there at feeding time, which is a wonderful time to watch them. The trainer was so good with the otters and it was fun to see her get them to beg, run around, and swim for their food. I could sit there and watch these otters eat mussels for ages. I also enjoy watching them roll around and scratch their backs after mealtime. But the best part of all was when they came over to pay me a visit and say hello. Definitely a highlight of my day. But there are other animals I have to show you, so let's get past the otter exhibit. I asked my nieces what they wanted to go see. You guys have been here loads of times. What, what are your favorite animals at the wildlife park? Um, I like the otters too and the giraffes. Giraffes, okay. So what else do you like besides the otters? Penguins. Penguins. Penguins and giraffes. Okay, we're gonna have to go find the penguins and the giraffes. As usual, the penguins did not disappoint. They were cute little swimmers and waddlers, of course, and head shakers and booty shakers. Actually, there was quite a lot of tail feather shaking, to be honest. Here are some of the other birds we enjoyed visiting in the park. The ostriches with their lovely long eyelashes and some waterfowl and some songbirds that were as colorful as the amazing flowers nearby with the most vivid red hue and a lovely peacock with his colorful feathers. Speaking of feathers, I'm a bit obsessed with the black curacao and his phenomenal mohawk of super curly feathers although these birds had mohawks that were quite something to be proud of as well. The gardeners at the park should be very proud of their plants on display as they are a wonderful complement to the animals. A very well-rounded day out of both flora and fauna. We enjoyed visiting a wide array of animals in their enclosures. Watching feeding time with these little prairie dogs was a hoot. Some of them were very skittery and shy about getting their food. And then there was this little fella who was boldly munching on this bunch of broccoli that was bigger than his head. The lone wolf looked a bit sad, but this anteater came up and paraded by us so that we could admire his fascinating snout and beautiful fur. And of course, these meerkats were just as charming as ever. And check out the massive mustaches on these wee little monkeys. So cute. At first I thought this was a fox, but actually it's a mongoose. Are two mongooses called mongoose? One of our favorite areas was Madagascar because I'm enamored with lemurs, even if they do bite. So after passing by this very slow tortoise, we found the ring-tailed stars of the show. We had to sneak in some photos with the lemurs. And then I had to capture video of this one. <laughs> doing some lemur yoga. I also got my nieces to pose for a photo with me 
Although you can see one of them was pretty unimpressed with the whole idea, I guess I'm not as fun to pose with as a lemur. After Madagascar, we stopped by the cafe for a spot of lunch. It was actually kind of fun to sit and watch the critters skittering around behind the glass whilst we sat and ate our yummy carrot cake. Not all of the animals are behind glass or other barriers. There are places you can roam around with the goats or pose with the pelicans. Once again, my niece preferred taking a photo with a pelican over me. <laughs> I was excited to hop aboard the train and see even more wild animals. This is the best way to see all the animals wandering in open meadows on the outskirts of the park, including the zebras or zebras, depending on who you ask, and the camels, whose backs were looking particularly mountainous, but probably my favorite sight of the day was this, the view of the rhinos with a lovely Cotswold stone building in the background, just perfect. But we can't finish the day without seeing the giraffes that my one niece said were her favorite. You can watch these graceful towering creatures wander outside and also stand inside the giraffe building on a viewing platform that lets you see these beauties at eye level as they walk around and munch on the leafy treats hanging around for them to eat. Please give this video a like, it really helps my channel. And leave a comment and let me know which of these animal experiences you would like to visit when you come to the Cotswolds. The Cotswold Wildlife Park is a great day out for families. And like the farm park, they also have extensive play areas for little kiddos who need a break to go slide, or swing or climb on stuff while their parents eat an ice cream on a nearby bench. Looking back on our visit to the wildlife park, I would say don't let the car park dissuade you from coming. The park spans 160 acres of open fields, gardens, and exhibits. Even on a busy summer day like when we visited during the school holidays, it was never oppressively crowded. And we thoroughly enjoyed our visit, including the beautiful gardens, lovely buildings, and best of all, the entertaining and adorable animals. I hope you enjoyed this visit to some of the various animal experiences in the Cotswolds. Thanks so much for watching and do something good in the world today.